walk into the room Sing the love the blessings <clears throat> I know everybody probably busy So I'm probably going to get started And then And God allow Let's catch this when you get an opportunity All right, peace and blessings. I want to talk to you real quick just for a moment about something that was in my heart. <clears throat> about setting your affections. Set your affections. You know, we want God to sex, set our affections. We want God to change our heart. But there's a measure of responsibility you play with setting your affections. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 said, you know, set your heart on things of Christ. Set your affections of things above and not beneath where Christ is seated. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 commands us to set our affections. You know, when you set something, you put it in order. You put it in place. You know, I like to think about this. <clears throat> when you're at home, when things are out of place, you set them where they're supposed to be. The children move the remote over here. So you take the remote and you set it back where it's supposed to be. You know, you got a lot of trash in your home. You clean up the trash and you leave the things that are supposed to be there while removing the things that are not supposed to be there. You set the house in order. You put things in their proper places where they need to go. Set. That's what we need to do with our heart. That's what we need to do with our lives. You set. That's what you need to do with your affections. What is it talking about, affections? Your desires. The desires of your heart are your affections. You set your affections. You know, some of us, our hearts are all over the place. But how do you set your heart where it needs to be? How do you set your desires where they need to be? How do you set your affections? And not just set them, but on things above and not beneath. <clears throat> so I'm going to just give a couple of examples. Number one is through prayer. Through prayer, you set your affections. Um, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 talks about how Jesus will finish the works that he started. In context, Paul says that I, I'm praying for you and I know that I'm, I'm confident that my prayers is going to work on your life because I hold you in my heart. I hold you in my heart. See, to set your affections, you have to hold it in your heart because the heart will open up and gravitate towards whatever's in it. That's why Jesus said, if you imagine a thing in your heart, you've already done it. The, man, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the heart begins to open up to a reality that is created by what you hold inside of it. If you hold sexual immorality, perversion, then that's what's going to open up to you. That's where your desires is going to be. You're always going to have a desire for whatever, like, because you hold that thing in your heart. But imagine if you held the word of God in my heart. That's why David said, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Why? Because if he holds the word of God in his heart, what do I mean by that? If he meditates and contemplates and holds it in his spirit, just meditate and think about the word of God. That's the second one. I'm, I'm going to go to that second. Then what happens is your heart begins to open up and have a desire for the very thing that you meditate on. Okay. So meditation is the second thing, you know, to how you set your affections. You ready? Meditation is another thing, how you set you your affections. Have that sound? Huh? So you still have that sound? It's something probably loose. So meditation. Meditate on my word day and night, and you be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who fruits will not wither but bear forth in their season. Well, one of the desires of God, one of the fruits of God is desires. So that's another way to set your affection. What are you meditating on? What are you minding? You mind the things of the Spirit. Guess what happened? It's a possibility that the fruits of the Spirit or the desires of the Spirit will be birthed in you. Like, or the affections, the, the divine affections will be birthed in you. You begin to desire the things that God wants. You begin to desire righteousness. You begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness. You understand? But, 
what about if you conscious or you minding or you meditating, you contemplating over and over again carnal things, worldly things, sinful things, things below and things and not of above, like then obviously if you're meditating on that, it's gonna set your affections in that direction. Then then it's possible that the works of the flesh should be manifest in your life. It'd be hard to surrender to God because Romans chapter 8 says that the carnal mind cannot nor will ever be subject to God. So if you find yourself having difficulties lining up with the will of God, desiring what God wants you to desire or what God is saying, if you feel like, oh, God want me to do this, but I don't really want to do it, then you need to set your affections. You need to meditate on what God, let, imagine it like, let God give you a picture, use your imagination to create that desire in you, like, see it come in the past. You know, you hold them, you know, you could do that with people. You hold them in your heart. You meditate on them. Don't meditate and hold in your heart how they did all these things wrong, how they so messed up. See them in the future. Like, see them saved. See them delivered. See them moving in their purpose. And then you'll, you'll have a desire to create an expectation. It's loose. I see where it's coming from. What is it? You'll have an expectation for that thing that you see in the spirit. And your heart will open up and then you can minister to them in spirit and truth. What's up? There's something loose there. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you do it by holding people in your heart in prayer. By what you're meditating on. Like, don't meditate how your kid is so bad. Meditate on how they, how they can be great in school. Meditate that God got a purpose for your life. See them moving in that purpose. See them coming home with a report card all A's. Set your affections and when you set your affections, you're really setting an expectation and when you set an expectation Expectation is the breeding ground for excitement like you see that Now the most powerful way hold on one second bro. The most powerful way that I find is use your words When God created the earth he set everything in the earth with his words I want this, let let there be light. When he said, let there be light, he allowed light to be where? There, he gave it a direction. He told light where he wanted to exist. He told the trees where he wanted them to be planted. He set them where they need to be. He set them in their place. And some of us, we need to set our desires with our words. David would do it all the time. David said, when I think about my distress, my soul is overwhelmed. That's why a lot of times he say, soul, hope in God, soul, bless the Lord at all times. He would have to speak to himself and set his affections, tell his soul what to desire, what to inquire, what to do. You know, you can set things in order in your, in, in your life by speaking it. You don't feel like worshiping God, but you, God, you know what? God, you are a worthy God. I, I'm going to want to worship you. I speak a desire to want to do it like so you will worship God. Mind you will line up to the will of God. You see what I'm saying? Just set it. And you could do that with your home, your children, and everything. Some of our homes be a habitation of all devils, including mine sometimes. I got to set it up. I got to set it. I got to set a boundary. Like I got to let the king ask God to let the kingdom of God come. Lord, I want to set up, let my worship be a place where you can inhabit Lord, I don't want pride here. I come against pride. I bind it. I don't want pride in my home. I don't want selfishness. I don't want strife in my home. So I cancel it. I bind it and command it to leave. Then set. What do you want in your home? Father, I want peace in my home. I want joy. I speak joy. Start putting things in your home that you want in there. Like, Start putting things in your, in your heart that you want in there. You understand? So this is just about setting our affections. And the Lord was just ministering that to me. And I'll just share it with y'all. You know that we, it's our responsibility to set our affections. God said, I want y'all to go to the forest. You might probably don't want to go to the forest. You probably want to go to the beach. I probably want to just stay home. But now that's what God said I got to do. So now I got to bring myself into alignment. I'm not going to keep fighting God in my spirit, in my heart. I don't feel like doing it, but God said, no, God said this, so so this is what we're going to do. We know a great thing is going to happen when we get there. We know something's going to happen. God is going to move. Healing's going to happen. 
You understand what I'm saying? Start setting your affections. And once you do that, it'll create an expectation. Okay. It'll create an assignment. All right? Peace and blessings. I'm getting back to work. All right? God bless.